Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, just after the American Open. Uh, that's uh, 20 to 3 uh, on Wednesday, the 15th of July. Uh, it's been a strong Open, and there was a, a huge reversal last night uh, uh, on the uh, S&P 500, uh, and that followed through on the UK market this morning with uh, the last time I looked, the FTSE up over uh, 2%. So that's carried on this afternoon uh, with advances, uh, hugely above declines, uh, and uh, the uh, all of the measures of the trend on VectorVest are up. Uh, we Yesterday, uh, we had a green light at the end of play, uh, and uh, this morning I was looking at VectorVest USA, looking for buys uh, as the color guard advocated buying uh, stocks today. Uh, that's followed through so far, folks. So uh, remember this uh, July the 15th is 10 minutes old. So an awful lot can happen between now uh, and the close of play in the US. Now the uh, uh, market timing graph of the US uh, still pretty much uh, as it was the last time I reported. Uh, and uh, uh, that uh, is the uh, DEW up signal that I've been following during this campaign, which is still in progress. And we've got that nice gap up this afternoon. This is a live chart. As you can see, uh, the uh, buy sell ratio is still showing uh, this very marked divergence. Price is rising. Uh, the uh, buy sell ratio falling. That's never good. A similar picture uh, with the MTI. But folks, uh, the trend is up uh, and uh, uh, I'm holding uh, the positions that I've got. Now, I got stopped out of two positions in the sell-off. I got stopped out of 40 net at entry. I made a little bit on half. I got stopped out of DXCM uh, at entry. Again, I made a little bit on half. I'm holding the rest of the positions, and uh, I, I'm looking to maybe uh, buy into a couple of new positions uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to try and show you how I, how I do that in a second. It's, it's far from being difficult. Uh, let's have a look at uh, the uh, market, uh, and that's this afternoon. This is this gap up this afternoon. As you can see, there's a double top. This is a five-minute chart. That's the gap up. Now, and that was the reversal yesterday afternoon. Uh, the reversal is easier. Remember this uh, SPX trades on a 24-hour market, and it's actually easier to see the geometry of the market on a 24-hour market. Uh, and I've got that running in the background. And uh, this is the, the 24 hour market from the last r major low. And those of you that have any knowledge of the wave will know that we had five waves up here. This is a 30 minute chart, folks. Five up, and we had three back. Now, the three back are agricultural, that's for sure. They should be the same size. But if you, uh, the only thing you really need to know about the Elliott Wave principle is if you see five up and three back, well, that's good. And yesterday afternoon, that first blue bar, that first 30 minute blue bar, that's the actual American Open yesterday afternoon. And the sell off happened pre the open, and the market opened down there. And then I noted that there was huge volume going into this, there was four bars up, and in those four bars, there was huge uh, volume. That's two hours worth of trading. And I, I felt that that was significant. So prices rising on rising volume, always good. And as you would uh, know, uh, the market stopped on a 78% retracement, apart from uh, the, the rats and the mice, the tails here that got uh, caught badly on the wrong side of this. So the shorts got trapped and uh, they had to cover and this thing flew up during the rest of the day. So. Uh, pulled back a little bit uh, in the overnight market and then pushed up and it opened uh, what 10 minutes ago in this range and as you can see it's doing its best to push up this would be if there's another 15 minutes to go but this pin bar would as you can see the low of that bar in fact was right along that uh, top so uh, all looks good to me uh, we shall see the front page of Vector Vest especially uh, this advances looks very positive to me. So what do we buy? All right, well, as you know, I'm holding positions based on the, the DEW. As long as it's good and the color guard is saying yes, then uh, one has to throw the dice up the table. 
I've been using a very simple search on Unisearch, and the search couldn't be really simpler. Uh, it looks uh, for shares that have got on the American market that have got an average daily volume of greater than 200,000 shares. Uh, that's a 50 day moving average of volume. I want the stock's comfort index, which is a measure of the long term trend of the share, to be above a threshold of 1.2. And then I sort all of the shares that fulfill those two simple criteria by the comfort index times earnings growth rate. And that has found some cracking shares. Now, I, I did this uh, this morning uh, based on last night's data, and nothing much has changed here. But just to give you an idea that we're in the right ballpark here, if I run that search on the 1st of July, and run the search from the 1st of July, and I quick test to today, which is two weeks later, that search is up 9.85% which is an annualized 256%. Uh, so I think that we're, we're batting, we're, we're working with something that's working in this market. If I go back to the 1st of June, uh, which is six weeks, uh, and I run the search and I quick test the top 10, we can see that that's up 28% in uh, six weeks. Please do not think that this is going to happen regularly. This is a, a very special time, folks, and it reminds me in the last few months of 1999. Uh, that buy-sell ratio divergence hasn't gone away. Nevertheless, there is a party on. Uh, so uh, if I go back to uh, today's date, now I would be much better if I just bought the damn things. But yours truly being a technician for the last, oh, God knows how many years, uh, can't resist having a quick gander at the charts. And the two that I like the look of today are DOCU and COOP. And if I uh, chart those, they fulfill a, 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 a chart pattern that's been very kind to me over the years. If I blow this up now to three months, uh, uh, as you can see, this docu pulled back in that sell-off and it found support at that last old top. Now, that's what Richard Wyckoff would have called a sweet spot. As you can see, there's a trend line here as well. And I assure you that there's a fib level in there as well from that low. If you don't believe me, I can draw it, but there is. Now, uh, Wyckoff would have been disappointed. Wyckoff would have bought the 180 level. But uh, I, if... The market continues up uh, and this uh, breaks above that high. I shall be tempted to buy into that this afternoon with a stop uh, down below the low. So um, I'm going to put an order and haven't done it yet because I've been preparing uh, this video. But uh, the vi I had a gentleman from Birmingham last week ask me, uh, how do I go about becoming consistent as a uh, swing trader? Uh, and uh, this is pretty much all I do. Sweet spots. And those of you that follow my work, uh, Wyckoff Springs are pretty much all I do. But there's lots and lots of sweet spots. There's a sweet spot just here, you see? Just there. Market came back, kissed that old top, and then we get a green bar. By the top of the green bar, put your stop underneath the low and do your best to take a few ticks. Uh, so I like the look of that. Uh, and uh, the other one is Coop. Uh, and uh, Coop's been very kind to me. Uh, I've swung trade in it quite a few times. This tight consolidation uh, is always good. But again, it's pulled back to that last old top and got uh, bought strongly. Again, uh, Mr. Wyckoff would have been disappointed. He sh uh, should have bought the level at 280, uh, but uh, I didn't. Uh, this happened in the uh, latter half of the trading session uh, yesterday afternoon, and I was in fact uh, doing a uh, TV program for a very dear friend of mine called Larry, Larry Pesavetis at tfnn.com, uh, uh, American Online TV. Again, I shall be tempted to buy into this if it breaks today's high with a stop loss under that low. And I wish I could tell you that I do something uh, uh, much more complicated than that, but that's pretty much all it is. Uh, if you want to generate high probability spread bets, 
uh, then uh, I assure you that what I've just talked about is a thousand times easier than Forex. If you don't believe me, just have a go with the Forex market. So, one, uh, I want uh, to be able to define whether the market is rising or falling, and I use the DEW market timing system that I've shown you on this chart. And the DEW is still positive. There's no doubt that this cycle is mature, but it's still positive. Uh, the front page of VectorVest says that it's uh, safe to buy stocks, and it said that uh, when I looked at it after the close, that was first thing this morning when I started to look at this. So uh, uh, the DEW is up, uh, the short term trend is up, uh, and then uh, I look for candidates uh, from uh, the uh, very simple uni search, which I've named uh, the DEW swingers. I used to just look at SP500 stocks, but when I was doing some work with the US, uh, in the last uh, Precision Swing Trading Group, they told me that uh, they felt uh, that uh, I was actually missing a great deal of opportunity and they were correct. So I replaced the S&P 500 with just a volume criteria. I would be much better off, ladies and gentlemen, if I just bought the damn things without doing any technical analysis. I think that uh, if you want to put a moving average on here, I think that uh, one would like to see uh, the market uh, above a 21-day moving average, and you'll find by pure magic, folks, that the market likes to come back and kiss that 21-day moving average. That was a beautiful confluence of the 21 uh, and uh, the old high. Uh, so that's the wrong moving average. I put 19. There's the 21. Touched it. 55 is also good, and if you're trading in shares, uh, that come out of that uh, DEW uh, swingers search uh, where the 21 day moving average is above the 55 day moving average uh, you'll find that shares will pull back into what I call the zone between the 21 and the 55 uh, and uh, that's exactly what happened here uh, so uh, a relatively simple methodology uh, I don't know what's going to happen next I haven't got a clue what's going to happen next. The market cannot be predicted on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. But over the last few months, uh, just doing uh, what I've just talked about now has been exceptionally profitable. This share needs to get through these uh, old tops uh, before uh, I will buy into it. And uh, uh, let's see uh, if that can happen. Let's have a look at the... Um, SPX. The SPX has got work to do to get through these old tops. Would not surprise me to see it pull back and close that gap uh, before that happens. So uh, it's probably going to take a while for that to occur. Uh, I have a target on the upside from the last uh, daily pattern, and that target uh, is the next target I think that the SP will get to is 3310. Uh, so that's another 100 points on the upside, which would be really nice indeed. I hope the uh, video uh, has helped a little bit, especially that young man in uh, Birmingham who's, uh, in fact, uh, uh, doing exceptionally well in his longer-term worry-free investing, uh, but struggling to become consistent uh, as a swing trader. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, oh, by the way, that fellow at YouTube says, uh, please subscribe uh, to YouTube, and if you could uh, share it, uh, that would uh, help get the word out. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.